everybody and welcome 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 to another wonderful episode of Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. Yes, learn English with Reza and Craig. My name's Craig. My name's Reza. And together we're going to help you improve your English and take it to the next level. So if you're a new listener, you're very welcome. And in this episode, we're going to help you get undressed and dressed. So literally, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Not, Not literally. literally, but we're going to give you the, the vocabulary. Ah, we're ah. going to give you the vocabulary you need when you're speaking <laughs> about dressing and undressing. There'll be a live unzipping <laughs> by Razor. We'll explain that later. And a live on air unbuttoning by Craig. So if you don't know what that means, you need to listen to this podcast. But before that, Reza, we have some feedback from Elisa from Finland, don't we? Hello, Elisa. How are you? Hi, Elisa. So, Elisa is a, a regular. We get a lot of feedback from her. It's always good to hear from her. She writes, Hi, after the last episode, I had my palm read. My what? Yes, I had my palm read. What's that? The palm is the, um, the fleshy front part of your hand. El palmo. So it's typical for a, for a gypsy or a fortune teller to look at that part of your hand and, and tell you what your fortune is going to be, to have your palm read. Um, by the way, we could put that, uh, we could have put that, I can't remember now, we might have put that in the causative have episode to have something done. It's true. I yeah. think we did. She didn't read the palm, uh, her palm herself. She had it read. I think we did. So after the last episode, she says, I had my palm read. And guess what? My future seems to be brilliant. The lady told me that she can see two men and probably one dog. Woof. Both men were bald. <laughs> But the dog was hairy. Ah. One of the men had a tattoo on the top of his head. Something like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> But the main thing was that they had a big announcement in their hands. I think you mean on their hands. We are podcasting forever. Yeah, well, that's a great message, Elisa. I wonder who it could refer to. That's really surreal. I think, Elisa, yeah. if you're not a fiction writer, you should think about it. That's really excellent, surreal fiction writing there. Some great ideas. And I like the way you tied it into the, the podcast. Although, if you, if you are going to publish that, be careful with the copyright surrounding Mickey Mouse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can't claim him as your character. As Craig knows, there's only one Mickey Mouse and he can't be copied. That's right. So thank you, Elisa, for your for your lovely comment on the on the website. Um, we spoke about clothes way, 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 way back on episode seven a long time ago. So if you'd like to revise your clothes vocabulary, go to inglespodcast.com slash seven. And of course, we also have an extensive, a very long list of vocabulary on mansioningles.com on the uh, in the vocabulary section so you can go there to revise your your vocabulary but today we thought we'd speak a little about some unusual words and verbs connected with getting dressed getting undressed and some vocabulary that we did not speak about back in episode seven Craig, can I just make an announcement before we continue? Mm -hmm. Just to warn listeners of a sensitive nature, to get into the spirit of this topic, dressing on addressing, there will be times when Craig and I are uh, fully naked. There will be full frontal nudity. But luckily we have the perfect bodies for podcasts. <laughs> so there is full frontal nudity. That means you can see us completely nude from the front during this podcast. Sadly, there's no video to go with that. But you can imagine, listeners, just imagine what's going on. Thank God we're not on YouTube. <laughs> Craig, let's proceed. So the first thing you do in the morning, phrasal verb, you get up. And then probably you get dressed. So there's that use of get with dressed and up. So get up, levantarse, and get dressed to put on your, your clothes. And the opposite of get dressed is get undressed or take your clothes off. How long does it take you to get dressed, Razor, in the morning? Uh, it depends. Uh, I'm quicker in the winter than the summer. 
<laughs> Do you know why? <laughs> because it's colder. Yes, <laughs> and, and you want to get your clothes on quick. And uh, precisely because it's warmer in the summer, I kind of do it in layers in the summer. What, what's a layers? Layers are capas. Like an onion? Yeah. So a, an onion's in layers, you peel off the layers. So for me, in summer, I put on the layers slowly. In other words, I don't want to put on too many clothes too quickly <laughs> because it's too hot in Valencia. So I put on a little bit and wait for a while, then a little bit more when I'm not in a hurry. It's true, actually. In the winter, I get dressed... As soon as I get up, immediately, as soon as, as soon as I get up, I, I get dressed. In the summer, maybe I'll go make a coffee and walk around and wash my face and then at some point during the morning, get dressed. Because it's so hot, it's so warm here. It's really, really hot. Craig, do you put on and take off your own clothes or does someone help you? No, there's no causative <laughs> in my morning routine. <laughs> Nobody does it for me. Um, he doesn't have his clothes put on or taken off by another person. He does it himself. Thankfully, yeah. I can I can do it myself. <laughs> oh, well done. So putting on and, and taking off clothes, getting dressed and undressed, obviously you have, um, with some clothes, you have buttons and with some clothes, you have zips. What's zip in Spanish? Zip is cremallera. Right. So the phrasal verb you need with buttons and zips is do up. So to do up buttons and to do up a zip. And the opposite of do up is undo. To undo buttons and to undo your zip. But you can you can do up and undo uh, other things like specific uh, items of clothing that have buttons or zips. So you can say to do up your coat or to undo your coat, mm -hmm. to do up your shirt or to undo your shirt because they have buttons on them. You can also do that with the verb to do up and undo. Right. So first you put on your shirt and then you do up the buttons. Very common for mothers to say to their children, do up your shoes, do up your shirt, do up your coat, which means button it. Of course, it's also a verb, isn't it? To button. Yes, and the opposite, to unbutton. Mm -hmm. But you have to have a, an object with that then. That's a transitive verb. So you unbutton, unbutton something, to button, unbutton a shirt, button a coat, or unbutton a button a pair of a pair of trousers which have buttons at the front, mm -hmm. or it could be trousers with a zip, but some have buttons. Remember? Yep, exactly. And to zip up is a phrasal verb. To zip up coat or jacket, and the opposite to unzip. Just in case you're not sure what we mean, it sounds like this. <laughs> Well done, Craig. Thanks for that demonstration. Um, I, <laughs> so zip up and put on are both phrasal verbs and they are separable, separable phrasal verbs, which mean you can put the object between the verb and the particle. So you can do up your jacket or you can do your jacket up. You can zip up your trousers or you can zip your trousers up. And of course, you can replace the object with it. So zip it up or do it up. More things you can do with clothes uh, to get them uh, sitting comfortably. You can tie and untie things. For example, uh, shoes often have laces, cordones. And uh, you can tie or untie a knot in the laces. As Craig said earlier, you can also do up, which means tie your shoelaces. Or anything which has a knot, that's K, K, N O T, K N O T, a knot, uh, noodle. noodle, you can tie or untie. So you can also tie or untie, for example, uh, a bow tie or a dicky bow, un, uh, una pajarita. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, like uh, what Craig and I wore to the podcasting event not long ago. We had to, we had to tie and untie our bow tie. I'll put a photo of Reza and I in the show notes to this episode so you can see us both in our suits and bow ties. That will be at inglespodcast.com slash 
119. Remember, with the verb to tie, it's also a noun. Obviously, tie, T-I-E, is corvata, And the verb is to tie. So, to tie a knot or to tie your shoelaces, as Reza said. There's another thing which you use to adjust clothing, ajustar, adjust, which is a buckle. And it can also be a verb. So, you can buckle or unbuckle things. Uh, you can buckle or unbuckle a belt uh, or perhaps shoes, shoes which have a buckle. Some some have laces, some have buckles, some have nothing, right? So buckle is hebilla. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. Hebilla is a buckle in Spanish. New word for me. So you can buckle and unbuckle. Your belt is a very common expression. Also buckle up is put on your seatbelt. That's right. Mm -hmm. Buckle up in the car. Put your seatbelt on. Craig, let's get let's get down to talking about actual clothes. I'll leave it up to you, uh, your pleasure, to talk about underwear. Well, underwears can be confusing, and I'll explain why. Um, Very confusing. It can, <laughs> it can be confusing because of the difference. Well, well, what confuses you? I normally wear men's underwear myself. Do you wear ladies' underwear or men? You can't decide. What, what is it that confuses you? What? <laughs> all, all, all our secrets are coming out now. Um, no, I mean the meaning of the words. For example, shorts in the US are what, you, what men wear under their pants. Now, pants is the American word for trousers. Pantalones. Exactly. Um, so in America, you, men wear pants on top of their underwear and they wear shorts under their pants. And what do British men do? However, British men wear trousers. Pantalones. Mm -hmm. And under their trousers, they wear pants. Calfoncillos in British English. Exactly. Do you see how confusing it is? Yeah. So you've got the same word in British and American English, but with different meanings. Exactly. Now, the word, the word shorts does exist in the UK, but shorts are shorts, like you yeah. wear when you play football or mm -hmm. go to the beach. Yeah. Just to give you an example, I'll say no more than this. It happens in Spanish as well. A common word in the Spanish-speaking world is coger. But if there are any Argentinian listeners... It's quite a different meaning there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so you get you get the idea. I will be speaking about that next week when we yeah. when we speak about collocations with take. Yeah. <laughs> Coger in Spain is not the same as Argentina, for no. example. Very confusing. So be careful of that. So again, pants are underwear uh, in the UK and trousers in the US. Now, for ladies, ladies in the UK under their clothes wear knickers. How do you know? That's what I have been told. <laughs> You've read that. Yeah. And <laughs> Internet's amazing for this information, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I, 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 I researched it myself. <laughs> yeah, I had to look it up on Google. And, um, did, you, did you look at images or text? Um, both. Okay. And, um, moving on? <laughs> moving on. Knickers, at silent K, be careful of the spelling, K-N-I-C-K-E-R-S, in the US are panties. So ladies' underwear at the bottom. Knickers in the UK and panties in the US. Be careful because there's a Spanish word, los panties, which is a completely different meaning. I haven't, I've never heard of that. Aha, a friend of mine, Angeles, explained it to me a few days ago. She said that panties in Spanish, los panties, Spanish word, are tights which go right up over your waist, kind of like trousers. That's what the Spanish call los panties. But it means... But is, are but they the under, underwear? Or? Yes, tights. Medias. Tights, okay. So panties uh, in British English and American English are different. And in Spanish, the word panties is an, another meaning, completely different. It's curious. So panties... In Spanish is another word for medias. Yes. Okay. In Spanish language. In Curious, Spanish. eh? That is yeah. very confusing. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Now, tights, T-I-G-H-T-S, in the UK are what you just said. Medias. Medias. But in the US, they say pantyhose. P-A-N-T-Y-H-O-S-E. Two words. Pantyhose. So pantyhose for ladies in the US, medias. And in the UK, tights. What about men? Is there a word that could be confusing for men? Yes, Americans confuse me sometimes with the word vest. Yeah. Because for me, a vest is kind of similar to a t-shirt, but you wear it generally under something else. 
Yeah. Or it could be on its own, but uh, it's really like a kind of underwear for the top half of your body. And there are no sleeves, are there? No mangas. It's tirantes. That's yeah. right. In British English. And what is it exactly in American English? Um, chaleco. Aha. Uh-huh. So a vest in American English, you'd wear it with a suit. So you'd wear a jacket, a vest and, and pants. So it's waistcoat in British English. Waistcoat in British English. Okay. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So that's that's also confusing. So in the UK, vest, men wear under their clothes or under their shirt. And in the US, it's a waistcoat, chaleco. Uh, the word socks for me is what I wear on my feet under my shoes. So you have two socks. You have a pair of socks. Uh, in American English, is it something different? No, exactly the same. Exactly socks the same. and socks. Although Americans do sometimes say stockings as well, don't they? It's not very common in British English, but I've heard in American English men's stockings used sometimes. Oh, I, I haven't. Yeah, okay. formally, but I've heard it. Okay. And also in old-fashioned British English men's stockings. Although yeah. These days it's a bit, sounds a bit old-fashioned. When they used to be higher. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Craig, uh, I leave the word bra in your hands. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> just because it's uh, to finish... To finish the theme of underwear, of course, uh, the top of the body, underclothes, ladies wear a bra. Proper word, brasier, but that isn't very commonly used. So if you'd like to buy that one when you're shopping, ladies, just ask for a bra. You do hear the full version a little bit more in American English. Not much, though. Brasier, you do hear it a bit more. Brasier, but normally bra. That's true. And we said before medias in English tights or pantyhose in the US, but that's when the two legs are connected. You can buy the underwear separately and there's a different name, stockings, S-T-O-C-K-I-N-G-S, stockings. It's kind of like tights, but in two separate parts. Yeah. You put on the right first and then the left or vice versa separately. Like very, very long socks. Okay. (laughs) But not not as thick. And how do you hold these these stockings up? How do they stop? How do you stop them from falling down? Well, usually they have elastic around the top, but you can buy suspenders which clip onto the top of the stockings and then hold them up. Suspenders in the US are called garters. G A R T E R S. Again, a different word in the US. Mm-hmm. for suspenders these uh things you're talking about i imagine they're not as commonly worn as they used to be i imagine it's a bit of a hassle for women hassle is un rollo, uh, to put these things on because you've got to put on the the stockings then attach it to the the suspenders it, it must be a bit of a, a bit of a pain un rollo, a has, hassle no yeah i don't think they're they're too common and they don't look very comfortable but i think they're they are quite popular especially if you'd like some excitement in the bedroom Together with stockings and suspenders, it's quite common for ladies to wear high heel shoes. In your imagination, yes, Craig, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure every day. <laughs> In Spanish, tacones, so high heel shoes. That's quite difficult to say because of the two H's. High heel shoes. Remember, with the H in English, to not use the throat, not from. Here. No, no, no. Imagine you're cleaning your glasses and you're breathing on your glasses and you're doing this. And that's the sound you need for the H. High heels. So high heel shoes. Now, Craig, we already mentioned to get dressed as a common verb, but there's a phrasal verb to get dressed up. When you add the preposition up, what happens to the meaning? Well, it changes. Uh, to, to get dressed up is arreglado or arreglada. So it's when you put on your best clothes, you shave if you're a man, you maybe put on makeup if you're, if you're a woman, and you do the best to make your appearance as best as, as, as possible, as attractive as possible. Mm-hmm. So you'd get dressed up to go out for the evening. You'd get dressed up to go to a wedding, for example. you get dressed up to go to a job interview. You really make yourself as... As, as presentable as possible. And what about to get dressed down? To dress down? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I've heard it. 
Yeah, I have too. To, to make an effort to look informal. Right. Because there are certain circumstances, like certain jobs, certain business people normally have to dress up. But every once in a while, they say, no, 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 this Friday we're all going to dress down. So what kind of clothes would you wear if you dressed down? Informal clothes, jeans, and no ties, etc. T-shirt. Yeah. Yep. So there is also the expression to dress down or to get dressed down. When was the last time you got dressed up? To go to the podcast award ceremony in London. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Probably once a year I get yeah. dressed up. <laughs> yeah, me too. Or less. Or less, eh? Will you be getting dressed up this summer, do you think? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Not if I can help it. I must admit I'm not a fan of getting dressed up. I only really do it when I have to. What about you, Craig? No, uh, I dislike getting dressed up intensely. I feel much more comfortable in casual clothes. Mm-hmm. So remember, to to get dressed is is to put on your clothes. To get dressed up is alegrarse. And obviously clothes are things you wear. So is the verb. There's the verb to wear clothes. W-E-A-R. Craig, what are you wearing? At the moment, I'm wearing an um, English podcast t-shirt, of course. A pair of shorts because it's very hot. And flip-flops. Ah, playeras. Mm-hmm. Is there yeah. another word for flip-flops? In there is that I can't remember, but it, Chancla- is one word. Chanclas. Chanclas as well. Chanclas, yeah. yeah. Flip-flops, which is onomatopoeic. Yes. Flip-flop, flip-flop, flip-flop. Yeah. What did you wear yesterday? Yesterday I wore a pair of blue shorts and a green short-sleeved shirt. It's a very nice shirt, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, Craig saw me yesterday because we were also recording podcasts yesterday. (laughs) Um, Did you notice when when I asked Craig, I said, what are you wearing? Because I was asking him about now. It's a typical mistake to say, what do you wear? No, it's not present simple. Because if you're asking about just at the moment, it's what are you wearing? And then Craig asked me, what did I wear yesterday? Because presumably you change your clothes from time to time. You don't wear the same clothes every day. That's why we don't use present simple. We use present continuous for asking a person about the clothes they're wearing on a particular day. But you can use the present simple for habits. For example, a question could be what do you wear for work? Because you go to work every day, it's a habit. So what do you usually wear for work? Oh, I wear a suit, I wear a tie. Mm -hmm. Or do you wear glasses? Because you normally either do wear glasses every day or not. It's not, you just pick and choose. So that would often be present simple. Some more words which are a little bit unusual connected to getting dressed and clothes. Um, What's the name of the thing at the top of a shirt right near your neck? Good question, because it's a false friend, isn't it? Collar in English, collar, uh, which is not collar. There's a Spanish word collar, which is a different meaning. But English collar is cuello. C-O-L-L-A-R. Yeah. Yeah, you use collar for... Um, is a, collar a necklace? A, yeah. A piece of jewellery. Collar is, it, is a piece of jewellery, it's a necklace. Isn't it a dog lead as well? Might or, be. Or a dog collar, I think. It might be that as well. Might for be dogs that. and cats, yeah. yeah. Also on your shirt, apart from your collar around the neck, at the bottom of the sleeves you have something called a cuff. Mm-hmm. C-U-F-F, which is puño. In and the, Spanish. the sleeve to remind you, although you can find it in episode seven, sleeve is manga, but you'll find that in episode seven. And um, years ago, I remember, it's not so common now, but there did not used to be buttons on men's cuffs when they when they wear shirts. But um, my dad used to wear cufflinks, mm-hmm. pieces of jewellery that connect the holes together in the cuffs. Yes. Have you ever worn cufflinks? Very, very occasionally, yes. Gemelos or gemelas, can't remember. This is a typical giri problem. We don't, gringo problem. Is it masculine or feminine? Can't remember. But I know in Spanish it's either gemelos or gemelas. The things you put in your cuffs instead of buttons. Cufflinks. In other words, the zip in your trousers just below the waist is your fly. F L. Why? Yes, it's the same as the verb volar, but it's a noun. So usually flies are zips, but they can be buttons on on some jeans. In that case, we call them button fly. So you can have button fly or zip fly. 
bragueta in Spanish. If you notice that someone has forgotten to do up their zip, you could say, your fly is down, zip it up. Or another common expression, you're flying low, which is a play on the word of <laughs> fly, volar, for an aeroplane flies low. But if you say to a guy, hey, you're flying low, do it up. It means it's embarrassing, your zip is down, so do up your zip quickly because you're in public and your zip is down, you're flying low. Craig, have you ever accidentally left your fly down and then been in front of people or been in public? No, never. I have once, once I did it in front of a class accidentally, very embarrassing. Someone pointed really? it out after about 10 minutes, they said, did you know your zip's down? <laughs> Yeah. What did you do? I quickly, I quickly zipped it up. <laughs> <laughs> You're wondering why the students were laughing at your jokes yes. so I much. Thought, yeah, they thought, my jokes, everyone knows they're not very funny. Why are they laughing? Yeah. They weren't laughing with me. They were laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> That's embarrassing. God. Thank that goodness is. I had my only good pair of um, boxer shorts on that, good, that day. <laughs> <laughs> Another word which is unusual is seam. S-E-A-M, the same pronunciation as parece, s w e m seam, but S-E-A-M is costura. So some uh, clothes obviously have seams. Most clothes, I'd say. Most clothes, yeah. Where you join the bits of material together. Even socks have seams, aren't they? Yep. What about the word strap? What does that mean in Spanish? Correa. Mm -hmm. So many things have straps. Yeah. yeah. A bag would have a strap. Some shoes have straps. Bras have straps. You have bra straps. Bra straps, yeah. And um, I'm 40-something years old, and I I'm still haven't quite figured out how to easily undo a bra strap. <laughs> I wish I did, but I haven't quite figured it out yet. W women find that very amusing, that uh, a woman can can uh, do up or undo a bra strap in, in a quarter of a, of a millisecond. And behind their back. And behind their back and in the dark and with an arm broken. And a, a man needs about 10 minutes to do it. We can't quite figure it out. One we? of those eternal <laughs> mysteries. Yeah. Um, if, you have, if you have a T-shirt or a jumper with a V at the top, it's a V-neck, which can also be an adjective. So a V-neck sweater for example, or a V-neck T-shirt. What if it weren't the V-neck? What if it were traditional, more traditional round neck? Yeah. Yeah. So you've got V-neck or you've got round neck? A sweater, you mean, a round neck sweater. Or yeah. T-shirt or anything you like. Yeah. I have some round neck T-shirts and I have some V-neck T-shirts. Mm -hmm. Which do you prefer? I prefer round necks just because they're the most common ones you can you can get. I don't think I have any, any V-neck v sweaters or T-shirts, actually. Pocket, you can have a pocket inside your jacket. So it's an inside pocket inside your jacket. And if you have clothes with no sleeves, and Reza said earlier that sleeves were mangas, you have a sleeveless jacket or a sleeveless shirt. Sin mangas. As Craig said earlier, in British English, a vest is normally sleeveless. You can have a sleeveless dress as well. Before we continue with the podcast, we'd like to mention our wonderful sponsors, italki, where you can find a native speaking teacher that will teach you one to one and improve your English. Why would you do this? Well, it's convenient because you study when you want to study. It's affordable because there's no language school to pay. So you're dealing directly with the teacher. And the teachers are from all over the world. So if you prefer the American accent, where you'll hear pants and shorts, or you could choose a British English teacher or an Australian teacher. You've got a whole selection of teachers from around the world. For listeners of our podcast, Italki are offering 100 free credits if you sign up through our website, and that's more or less a free lesson to try their service. So both of us recommend you go there to inglespodcast.com slash Italki, where you can find more information. And Reza and I would like to thank Italki for sponsoring Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. Craig, which sock or shoe do you put on first, left or right? 
I don't know. I think it depends because I'm so groggy and tired in the morning that I really don't know. I probably write because I'm right-handed. Do you know what you put on first? I think I don't have a preference. I think I mix it up. Yeah, me too. No preference. What's your favorite material for clothes? Because you can have clothes made of wool, for example, lana, there's silk, cotton, linen, leather, and all these synthetic materials like nylon and polyester. Have you got a favorite? Well, do you mean what I'm wearing or what a very good friend of mine might be wearing? <laughs> for you, what, what would you... <laughs> for what I'm wearing. When you okay. choose your clothes, what, what would you choose? Okay. Um, I, I don't like a man-made or artificial material at all. Me neither. So I try to avoid it. So I like wearing cotton and linen above all. They're yep. my favorite. Cotton I, and linen. Actually, I agree. I agree. 100%. Cotton or linen, definitely my two favorite Mm-hmm. My two favorite materials. I have occasionally had a few items of clothing that were made of silk, but not many, not many, because silk's very expensive. And uh, generally, silk seems to be worn more by women it, uh, for some reason. What's the last item of clothing you bought? Do you remember? Uh, yes, a uh, dinner jacket or what Americans would call a tuxedo to go to the podcast award ceremony because my old one had become too small. <laughs> Me too. I had I had grown out of, I had got too big for my old one. Generally speaking, do you wait for the sales to buy clothes or do you just buy things when you, when you see them that you like regardless of, of the price? I virtually never buy clothes unless they're on sale. So you it's very rare. You for wait for the uh, like twice a year in Spain. Uh, uh, it's not when that they I, have the sales. Well, I don't wait for a particular item of clothing to go on sale. I can't be bothered to check. I just go to the shops when the sales are on and only buy things in the sales. What happens to me is when I go in the sales I can never find anything I like and when I find something I like it's not my size. So it's so restrictive sometimes in the sales that I've given up. I just I just go when when I can go and and I buy when I when I find my size and something I like because I never find something that I like and that fits me yeah. in the sales. That's the problem. I'm prepared to make one big exception, and I often do for that: footwear, mm-hmm. shoes. Shoes are important. I will and often do spend a lot of money on shoes. They don't have to be in the sale for me. I I'm not going to cut corners on on shoes. I will buy expensive shoes, which are not on sale, which cost double and triple the price of other shoes. If I think they're worth it, I'll do it. But I won't do that with clothes. <laughs> I'll only do it with the shoes. But that's probably because I my, I have bad feet. If you say I have bad feet, it means they give you problems. My feet give me problems. So it's important. Someone very clever once said, you should spend a lot of money on your shoes and on your bed. Because if you're not in one, you're in the other. <laughs> it's true, isn't Very it? Very true. Do you have a favourite item of clothing that you like to wear? Not really, no. No, I'm prepared to adapt. What about you? I've got a very nice sleeveless jacket that I love because it's got lots of pockets. Mm-hmm. It's got inside pockets. It's got pockets ah. for big pockets, small pockets. And ah. I really enjoy wearing it when I travel because I can ah. put everything in. Right. And when I go through... The security control, I just take it off Mm -hmm. and that's it. I don't have to take off uh, different pockets. It's all together in one. Mm -hmm. And then it's got lots of zips and lots of compartments. Uh Uh, And that's my favorite piece of clothing, yeah. Well, I don't have a favorite piece of clothing, but I do share share your love of um, pockets. Mm. I do like things with lots of pockets, particularly when traveling. The sheer practicality of it, that is important to me as well. I do like pockets. It seems to be a very manly thing. Men are into pockets more than women, from what I've gathered. Well, we don't have handbags, do we? That's probably it, isn't it? Men like pockets. Women aren't so fussed about pockets because they're gonna have they're gonna have a handbag or something anyway, right? Do you think you judge people by their clothes, by the clothes they wear? Do you form opinions when you first meet somebody by their dress? I try not to, but I reckon I probably do like most of people. Whether I want to or not, it probably happens. Mm-hmm. I mean, if somebody has a strange haircut, dyed, 
Lots of tenido, strange color, lots of piercings, uh, strange tattoos and very unusual clothes. I'm probably going to think, oh, well, this person is a bit rebellious a bit, uh, but how do I know? They, they might be a business person. I don't know, but you can't, you presume that, don't you? You yeah. do judge people. I think it's subconscious. You form ideas and opinions about people very, very quickly without even speaking to them sometimes, which is a shame. Zips or buttons? Which do you prefer? Oh, good question. Uh, for trousers, I prefer zips. Me too. Because uh, many jeans and shorts that I've bought with buttons, um, the, the buttons seem to fall off sooner or later. And if there's one place you don't want a button to fall off, it's at your fly. <laughs> you really exactly. don't want a button to fall off there, no. do you? No, you don't. Belts or braces? Braces are um, tirantes for men to hold up their trousers. In the US, they call them suspenders, which, if you remember, was the same thing for women mm -hmm. because they suspend the trousers from falling down. They hold them up. Yeah. So if you had to choose belts or braces, you have a preference? I've never owned a pair of braces. They're quite old-fashioned, aren't they, now? You don't see yeah. them very often, except... Maybe formal occasions with yeah. a suit. Yeah. Or like what we had to wear not long ago with a tuxedo or a dinner jacket. Yeah. Braces are sometimes worn or suspenders as Americans Yeah, say. they're not very common. Craig, how many pairs of shoes have you got? Including flip-flops and slippers? No, just shoes. Shoes to wear outdoors, but yeah. including sports shoes. Okay. Sports shoes, uh, outdoor mm. shoes, but not flip-flops because they're for the beach and thing. I'm counting in my head. I'm going to say approximately seven, seven pairs or eight pairs, including boots, like hiking boots and walking boots. Is that a lot? That seems about the same as me. No, I have the feeling that's about average for a man. What about women? They seem to have a lot more pairs of shoes, don't they? Well, let's not stereotype here. <laughs> yeah, they often do. They seem to. Not always, but it is pretty common, isn't it? I think it depends. I think I know some friends of mine have 20, 30 pairs of shoes, and they're men. I mean, I think it, it, yeah. it depends on, on your, how fashionable you are, how, how fussy, which is a special. You are having different colored shoes for different clothes and different trousers or dresses. I think, generally speaking, women do have more pairs of shoes, but um, I'm pretty sure women have fewer than seven, some, some of them. Craig, do you prefer wearing boxers or Y-fronts or some other type of underwear? Well, we, I think we better explain the difference. Boxers are loose underwear for men, like shorts, really. In other words, los boxers. Is that what <laughs> they say in Spanish? Okay, <laughs> los boxers. <laughs> <laughs> really? I think, I think the listeners might guess the meaning of that, yeah. Okay. What about wife fronts? Mm, calzoncillos, is that it? They're tighter, aren't mm. they? And they have the shape of a Y in the front and they're quite tight to the skin, to the body. I prefer boxers. I prefer to have a little bit of fresh air down there. I don't think I've worn wife fronts since I was about 11 years old. No, me neither. I don't like them at all. I don't like them. And the boxers you wear, without actually showing me, do you prefer <laughs> tight boxers or loose boxers? Loose. Yeah, me too. Very loose. Me too. Yeah. Whereas my brother, for example, always wears the tight ones. They're boxers, but they're tight. I don't, don't like them myself. What's the best length for a gentleman's sock? Are you a short length guy or a long length guy? Do you like socks to go almost to the knee, just below the knee, above the ankle? Some socks now you can get really, really short just above the top of the shoe. Yep, like I'm wearing now <laughs> with my shorts. Uh, it depends on the season. Now I'm wearing exactly the type of sock that Craig said. It goes just above my ankle. That's because I'm wearing it with training shoes, trainers, and shorts. But I wouldn't wear that type of sock with trousers. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. With trousers, I would wear a longer type of sock. How long? Depends. In the winter, usually longer. In the summer, shorter. I wear a, a normal size, a normal length sock during the winter, during the summer, but shorter ones for the gym. I wear very short socks for the gym. Do you never wear knee length socks? No, it's not, it's not cold enough here. They're ready for warmth, I think. Yeah. So knee length, length, longitude. So knee, K-N-E-E, -E, knee length, it goes up to your knee, hasta la rodilla. 
Mm-hmm. So you normally wear them not too, kind of between the knee and the ankle. Exactly. Okay. Around uh, about the calf, C-A-L-F. And uh, what do you prefer your socks to be made of? Mainly cotton. But these days they mix in some synthetic yes. polyester so they don't lose their shape. It's hard to get 100% cotton socks now, isn't yeah. it? What about woolen socks? Do you ever wear them? I have done, but they, they wear out very quickly. To wear out is disgust, disgustar. So they uh, have holes, they, they yeah. develop holes very quickly. I like woolen socks, but yeah. they're not very practical. Although they do keep you nice and warm in a cold winter's day, don't mm. they? One final question, Reza, before we, we finish this this episode for this week. Do you think that clothes we wear reflect how we are as people, what's inside us? I, how, how much of our decision to wear what we wear is based on peer pressure, external advertising, that kind of thing, and how much of it is our own personality? Well, I used to, in the past, I used to think but hopefully not necessarily. But now I've come to realize that, yes, it is true. I think it's impossible to avoid in some way showing or revealing something about yourself in your choice of clothes. It's impossible to avoid it. I have tried to avoid it, but I don't think anyone's capable of. Do you mean avoid it? You mean wear neutral clothes that people wouldn't necessarily judge you one way or the other? Yeah, or find out anything about you. But I don't think it's possible. Your clothes always tell people something about you, even if you don't want them to, I believe. What do you think your clothes say about you? I think my clothes... Uh, Today they're they're showing that you're a podcaster. Yeah, (laughs) both Craig and I were in the English podcast uh, t-shirts. But I reckon my clothes usually show, I hope they show, that... Fashion isn't that important to me to be fashionable, but I want to look clean and presentable, but that I don't really care uh, on style. That's what I hope my clothes reflect. What about for you? I'm pretty much the same as you, but I'd add one thing and that's really important to me and that's to be comfortable in the clothes I wear because Mm -hmm. I have in the past worn more fashionable clothes. I never really felt that comfortable in them because of the fit or because of maybe a bit pretentious uh, feeling I had. So I mainly want to be comfortable. I like wearing jeans, t-shirts, casual clothes that fit me well and that make me feel comfortable. Can I say that the English podcast t-shirts that we're wearing right now are incredibly comfortable because Craig, being a man of good taste, like myself, made sure, you're welcome, that they were 100% cotton. And we hope that the two people who recently won an English podcast t-shirt, it was two people, wasn't it? We hope you're enjoying them as well. We hope you find them comfortable and that they more or less fit you. Uh, Of course, we can't get your size exactly. And, uh, you know, maybe take a picture and send it to us. Well, we'll we'll put it on the website. Yeah, it'd be great. And now it's your turn to practice your English. We would love to hear from you. So if you have a question for us or if you have an idea for a future episode, please get in touch, send us a voice message and uh, tell us what you think. You can reach us uh, by voice at speakpipe.com slash English podcast. And that link is in the show notes for this episode. Or you can send us an email to me, Craig at englishpodcast.com. Or to me, Reza at BelfastReza at gmail.com. And if you would like to become a patron of our podcast um, and get some detailed show notes, go to patreon.com slash English podcast, where we are building a community of people who are donating a, a dollar a month or something similar to uh, pay for us to hire somebody, to employ somebody to write our show notes every episode. And we'd like to say thank you to the people who are sponsoring us at the moment. Who are, Reza? Lara, Tara, Mamin, Juan, and... Raul, Rafael, Daniel, Manuel, Sara, Cory, and Jorge. Thank you very much, all of you. And please join us on next week's episode when we'll be speaking about common collocations with the verbs break, catch, and pay.
Hay. Until then, it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later. 